is Steve Hall. I first visited Death Valley in 1997 and I've been doing exploration of undocumented areas of the park since 2009. I've made a number of important co-discoveries in Death Valley over the past decade, such as Sunlight Bridge, Double Bridge, the Smoke Tree Slots, and the Teddy Bear Choyas. Death Valley is by far my favorite national park. So what do you think about Steve going to Death Valley? I think it's amazing and I'm so proud of him to go out there in a wilderness when where just maybe few people get to go, get to see, um, you know, do all the slow hikes, discover some amazing places. I think it's really cool. I think it's really adventurous and it opens um, eyes to other people get to see those places. I think it's amazing. Um, I'm really proud of him and I support him on the journey. <music> When Daddy goes to the rally, I miss playing with him at home, and I hope he be safe. The valley has scorpions, snakes, and wizards, and it's scary. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Last Chance Solo my four day backpacking expedition here in Death Valley National Park. I'm standing at Tea Kettle Junction. I'm about to drive one and a half miles west of here to start my route. And I'll tell you a little bit more about my route in just a moment. I'm currently parked on Racetrack Road, about to begin my four-day journey into the Last Chance Range of Death Valley. As part of this, I'm going to be seeing some interesting things. Up to four side canyons with potentially good narrows. I'm going to see Upper Grandview Canyon, Grandview Peak, Warm BM, and Cameo BM. So there's a lot to see, but the challenges are great to get there. For one thing, there's no water along the route, so I have packed five gallons of water, which weighs over 41 pounds, in addition to my regular pack weight with all the other things. And then also, this area is very remote and isolated. I won't be seeing any other hikers along the way, except for potentially a special guest. And then finally, there's no information hardly at all available on the internet or in guidebooks for this route I'll be taking. So I'm gonna rely on my planning, my experience, as well as studying of satellite imagery and maps to make this successful. Let's go. Ooh, that's heavy. Because I couldn't fit every all these gallons, I'm actually gonna be carrying one to start out. I'm starting out at the northern end of Racetrack Valley, and this is looking back toward the racetrack and the grandstand, which you can see there in the distance. This is really good terrain to start out. I'm gonna head first toward the low gap in the hills. The terrain continues to be quite easy with this wash I'm following. And when I get up to the mini pass in a little while, I'll explain the objectives for day one, the things I'll be seeing and doing today. The pack is super heavy, so every time I can find a rock like the one I'm sitting on now, I'm gonna rest and take off my pack. Gone over a mile already. And again, this is hard, but I'm super happy and excited to be here, very grateful. Looks like I'm approaching the first marker point that I put on my GPS, which is between these two small hillsides. There's some beautiful rock in the distance on that hillside. I'm gonna be heading toward that in the mini pass that I was talking about earlier. 
should be there soon. Bit challenging to hike down through this. I just took a quick look at my topo map and realized I wasn't supposed to be going down these dry cascades. So the old road actually starts right above this and I could have picked that up. So I'm gonna backtrack and pick that up because it gets pretty treacherous to go down this with a heavy backpack. So indeed, there's the wash route and off to the right, the old road, which I can see going slightly over the hill and then down. Now this is more like it crossing the mini pass and I can see the rest of today's terrain ahead. That washer little canyon route was leading straight toward that beautiful hillside in the distance. Check out this large barrel cactus. Looking over here, the old road goes down. I'm gonna be following that. Kind of straight in the valley toward the distance there. So here at the mini pass, I wanted to give you an overview of day one. So I'm gonna be hiking toward down toward Round Valley. And then the minimum goal is to at least get to the first of the four side canyons I'd like to check out. A nice breeze has kicked up helping to keep me cool as I continue hiking down the old road toward the low spot for the day. Check out the cactuses growing on the old road. And when I say old road, what I mean is old closed road. This road's been closed to vehicle traffic for probably for decades now. These are the types of spots I look to catch a break where there's a nice bank above the wash. I can set my pack down and rest for a few minutes. I'm just gonna show you the view from this spot. Looking over there, that's the Cottonwood Mountains. Straight ahead here, that's the mouth of Devonian Spine Canyon. And looking over this way where I'm heading, Grandview Peak and Dry Mountain are visible in the distance and also the two small hillsides I'm aiming for, which is my next objective. Here, as you can see, I've picked up the old road once again and following it. Oh, so impressive. Can now see Warm BM and Cameo BM. But that whole summit block, the whole mountain there above Round Valley is quite incredible. Finally made it into this main wash, which actually I think I'm gonna be following all the way to the head of Grandview Canyon tomorrow. I've got about two hours of daylight left today and I want to make it at least another mile and a half to the mouth of the first side canyon. Just up ahead, you can see the gap between these two small hillsides. Also up ahead, see that impressive looking canyon in the distance? That could be one of the canyons I'll be exploring tomorrow. What a beautiful scene looking back toward Yubahibi Peak as the sun begins to set here in Death Valley in the Last Chance Range. Some real pretty mountains ahead. That canyon on the right is Side Canyon 1. That will be the first thing done tomorrow to explore that. 
Well, it's definitely getting late and I finally made it to where I'll be camping for tonight after a very difficult day one. I'll do a recap for you in a bit, but right now I'm going to set up camp. Well, time to fix some dinner here at camp. Let's see yellow curry for tonight. To boil some water. This is all that's left. I drank nearly a whole gallon of water today. Actually, a gallon if you count the Gatorade I drank. Let's see here. Right there. Okay. This water's precious. I can't afford to spill or lose any of it. I'll give that a few minutes to boil. And dinner is served. Be really challenging being out here all alone in the middle of nowhere and I really appreciate my dear wife Daria and my wonderful son Stefan letting me go out here and take on this adventure but of course I always miss them like crazy when I'm out here. Day one was really all about hard work it was about hauling those five gallons of water along with all my stuff deep into the last chance range and to get things set up for the rest of the trip. There was some nice scenery such as through Round Valley and some of the mountains as they began building today, but the real payoff is the next three days. There's going to be a lot to see, beautiful canyons, some major peaks, really excited and looking forward to these next few days. So that's about it for day one. Morning everyone, it's day two of Last Chance Solo. Today I've woken up and had some blueberry granola for breakfast. And today is all about canyon exploration. I'm going to be exploring up to four side canyons, each with unique features. And I'll explain about each one as I go into it. So before I pack up camp, I'm gonna go ahead and explore the first side canyon. Now this side canyon the interesting thing looks like that it has some very high canyon walls, especially on the left side. And remember, very few have ever explored these canyons as these are quite far from any road. So I'm real excited to be the first to document these. These have never been documented by photos, trip reports, or anything like that. So let's go ahead and get started with the first side canyon. You can see the sun starting to shine down on Round Valley in the distance. And looking around here, this is the first side canyon I'm hiking towards right now. Following a very nice wash up to the mouth of this canyon. We'll be there in just a few minutes. This is the right side canyon wall. It's already quite high and impressive. 
And I'm just about to walk around the corner and get a glimpse of the rest of the canyon. Some towering cliffs there in the background. And this is the left canyon wall beginning to take shape. I'm gonna hike a little bit more up and get some more views of that left wall. Now a couple features about this canyon I've noticed. There are a lot of these little mini caves cut into the rock as you can see here. I'm seeing these scattered all over the canyon. Also notice the canyon walls, how they're not just vertical, but they're even indented inwards at the bottom. Very impressive. Impressive high walls. The sun shadow also makes this an amazing view. Looking back down canyon. So this will be my turnaround spot for the first canyon. It was quite impressive. Really enjoyed looking at the walls and even the background there in the distance. You can see how impressive the upper canyon is. Just want to show you what this view looks like. It's going to be a lot faster going back down to the tent. See, this is fairly steep downhill. Just looking at the colors and texture of that lighter colored wall at the top there. Didn't notice that on the way up. I just want to draw your attention looking ahead. If you can see that ridge in the distance, long and flat, that actually leads to warm BM or benchmark peak on the left. But on the right side there, there's a little pass that I'm gonna have to climb. When I was studying satellite imagery, that pass made me a little nervous. Wasn't sure if it was climbable, but we'll find out tomorrow for sure. Made it back to camp from exploring the first side canyon. So now I'm gonna pack everything up, backpack up about half a mile, drop my pack and explore the second side canyon. Also, one of the things I wanted to mention here about camp, which is neat, is I can see the racetrack and even the grandstand. The grandstand's actually perfectly framed by the mountains. Okay, let the backpacking begin now. We're on day two. Oh, it's heavy. Whew. Heavy, but not as heavy as yesterday, about 10 pounds lighter. I'm sure nothing is forgotten at camp. Got everything. Head up canyon. I've reached the mouth of the second side canyon. So I'm going to head further up the main canyon first and find a place to set down my heavy pack. Found a nice rock here in the wash to set down my pack. And now I'm going to enter the second canyon. This one's a little bit longer, about three miles round trip to check out. But this is the one with potentially some spectacular narrows. I've been really looking forward to seeing this. So let's go see what's there. Kind of a neat bowl shape to that canyon wall in the background. Wow, this canyon looks impressive right from the start. Check out those very high vertical walls in the background. As I was hiking up the canyon here near the beginning part, check out this big horn sheep skull and horn that I found. Really huge, very heavy as well. There's some other bones and things scattered along the ground here. Very cool. Of course, I'd rather see a live one, but this is interesting to check out nonetheless. 
looks like the Narrows will be getting started shortly. Now there's a pretty rock. Notice all the rock fall in this canyon. A lot of boulders come tumbling down from above. Even more boulders right here. Looks like some of the best narrows might be right around the corner here. Oh, that's pretty neat. Ends right here at this dry fall. Check this out. Wow. No climbing this one. So this is the end of the second canyon I wanted to check out. It ended at this major dry fall. Some nice narrow, some interesting things in here. It took about one hour to get here from where my pack was left. So now I'm gonna hike back down canyon and resume backpacking. Checking out the end narrows in the opposite direction. Love this view and turning the corner here. Spectacular. Check this out. Almost back down to the main wash. I can see my backpack in the distance. This was quite the little side hike. Okay, I made it back to my pack. I'm gonna take a brief break for a snack and then I'm gonna continue backpacking all the way to camp. I'm not going to explore the third side canyon. I might save that for the morning, but I need to leave time to do the most important thing today, which is to do Upper Grand View Canyon. Okay, time to back back out to the next spot. It's heavy, but not as heavy as yesterday. Notice I'm still carrying a gallon by hand, and that's just to keep some of the weight off my back. Just makes it a little lighter. On super hot days like this, I always try to take shelter on the side of the canyon that has some shade when the rock walls are big enough, like right here. Feels much nicer than hiking in the sun. I'm pretty sure that's Dry Mountain there, visible in the distance. Looks like I'm hiking towards the base of it. Pretty colors on this rock.
taking a break here by this rock in front of me. You can see a very impressive uh, mountainside. And this is also the turnoff for the third side canyon, which I'm skipping for the time being. I'm going to continue up the main canyon with my backpack. Looking back down canyon, I have the best view yet of the racetrack in the grandstand. The main canyon has narrowed down considerably here in the upper reaches. Uh-oh. Ran into a major obstacle in this main canyon. Up ahead you could see a series of rock shelves that are fairly steep. I'm going to go check it out and see if I can climb up them safely. If not, I will have to do a bypass, which will be hard with this heavy backpack. There's a couple of dry pools here, which collect water when it's been raining. Here's the other dry pool, the base of these rock shelves. It's really a beautiful, pretty little grotto area here. And I'm going to go ahead and climb these steps. It's not that steep, but there is some loose rock. So I'm going to take it careful one step at a time. It'll be a lot easier without this heavy backpack. But I got to get up above this, and a bypass would be even harder. Another one of these pools. Here's the view looking from the top. So, the second one, third one, if you want to call it that. It's a little tricky. I think I'm going to try to find an easier way up it. The rock is fairly loose. Maybe if I go around. Another one. Cross over the, between these two. Looks like all the hardest stuff is passed now. Yay, home free. Wow, what a view looking back down. Coming up on the top of this canyon and the plateau I'm gonna camp on. Wow, that is Grandview Peak up there in front of me. So that is Grandview Peak I'm looking at right there. And I'm going to camp just a little bit into this canyon. Found a nice area, I'll show you. I'm going to set up camp right here. You can see there's a nice rock shelf for my backpack and my belongings and for cooking. And then right here, a nice place to set up my tent. So let me do that before I move on to my final day hike today. enjoying some dried mangoes. It's getting late, it's 3.45, and that's why I went ahead and set up camp. But now I'm going to hike down Grandview Canyon, the upper canyon. 
And this should be very interesting. I may be able to go as much as two and a half miles from right here. So it'll be dark or just about dark when I get back. Baby lizard likes my jacket. I want to show you a few things here. I'm up on the plateau below Grandview Peak, which you can see on the right side. And I will be doing that summit tomorrow. Grandview Peak is 6,948 feet in elevation. So moving over here, you can see into Upper Grandview Canyon, which I'm going to drop into and explore right now. In fact, I've been waiting for a long time. I hiked Lower Grandview Canyon on November 13th, 2013. So it's been an, almost seven years. And then Dry Mountain is there in the middle in the distance, a very impressive Death Valley peak. Dry Mountain is 8,674 feet in elevation. And I hiked Dry Mountain on June 14th, 2010, a little over 10 years ago. Dropping into the wash of Grandview Canyon, this is how you do it on Death Valley hillsides. Really love the lighting on these mountainsides in the distance. So I hike down Grandview Canyon. To explain a little bit more about what I'm doing back in Grandview Canyon, when I hiked it seven years ago, I ran into major dry falls. So it's impossible to see the entire canyon at once. You have to see it from the top and from the bottom separately, kind of similar to Moonlight Canyon here in Death Valley. So here I am seven years later, finally getting to see the upper canyon. And I know I can only go so far because there's going to be some major dry falls. We'll soon find out how far that is. Looking up here, this is the fourth side canyon I was hoping to explore. I will not have time on this trip, but that's okay. Do the best I can. And looking in the opposite direction, you can see the front face of Grandview Peak. Wow, that is one impressive block of rock. Check out the orange colored rock. Kind of solid, crumbling, jagged rock down below. Then up higher, the landslides of loose dirt and rock. Wow, I love this orange rock, it's so bright. This is some neat looking rock. Notice the patterns, light and dark alternating. This is another super impressive view as I continue heading down canyon. Notice the red rock kind of in the middle here and then the really massively tall peaks behind it in the background. Wow. See that impressive pointy peak on the right side? Looks pretty awesome. Canyon is just super impressive. Quite beautiful. Early evening light is really bringing out some nice colors high up the canyon and mountainside. My notes taken from satellite imagery show that I'm about to hit a major dry fall. Oh, before that, check this out. I literally just saw this as I was walking down. This is a balloon. These blow into the canyons and the areas around Death Valley and then uh, we need to pack those out when we find them. But so I'll go ahead and put that in my pocket. But like I was saying, uh, my study of satellite imagery shows a major dry fall coming up. 
And so I'm gonna let you see that with me and get our first reaction. Major dry fall should be coming up if there indeed is one right around this corner. Oh wow, check this out. Whoa, wow. Indeed, this is a major dry fall. Just stick my pole out over there. Definitely cannot be safely down climbed. In fact, I better back up a little bit. Here's another look into the chasm below from a safe distance away. And the major dry fall here in Upper Grandview Canyon. I climbed up to the ridge above the major dry fall to take a look and it does not look like it's easily bypassed to get back into the canyon. These are all sheer cliffs. And one last look, this is, will be my final view down upper Grandview Canyon, what you can see right here. So this is my turnaround point for upper Grandview Canyon. Behind me you can see the first major dry fall. So I just scrambled up the ridge, took a look down canyon, and now I'm going to head back to camp. Safety always comes first on my Death Valley trips. And obviously it felt unsafe to try to scramble down back into the canyon and see that small stretch of canyon in between the two dry falls. So I do not like to take any risks. I like to be safe. And that's why I'm turning around and heading back to camp. But boy, Grandview Canyon, the upper portion was quite beautiful and impressive. Beautiful sunset right now over the Last Chance Range. Almost back to camp. Taking one more look at this gorgeous sunset over Grandview Peak. All right, so I made it back to camp. And now it's time for some dinner. Show you mac and beef tonight. So I've got to add 12 ounces of water. Boil that water. That's boiling. All right. Stir that up good and wait for a bit. So day two of Last Chance Solo has come to an end. Today was really a day of exploration. Checking out those two side canyons and then checking out Upper Grandview Canyon the best I could. So now we move on to day three tomorrow. I'm going to be summiting Grandview Peak, perhaps with a special guest. You'll have to stay tuned and see who that might be. And then I'm going to backpack, continue on my solo journey to a plateau directly below warm BM, if I can make it that far. So hopefully everything will go well. Halfway through Last Chance Solo and it's been a good, very good first two days. Really enjoying this time out here in Death Valley, all alone. And now I'm set to enjoy some dinner under the beautiful stars. Hey everyone, about to go to bed. Just wanted to show you my sleeping bag. I actually sleep with a minus 15 Fahrenheit bag. It's only supposed to get into the high 40s here. That's supposed to be the low tonight. Um, but I, I don't like being cold, so I bring this sleeping bag and I don't get cold. Anyway, good night everyone. This is the end of day two.
Good morning, everyone, and welcome to day three of Last Chance Solo, my four-day backpacking expedition here in the Last Chance Range of Death Valley National Park. I've got a big day in store today. In just a little while, I will be meeting not one, but two special guests on the summit of Grand View Peak. But before then, I happen to wake up a little bit early today, so I'm going to go see if I can find a route over to the third side canyon I had been wanting to check out. Looks like it's only about a half mile from here. So starting here from camp, I'm going to climb this, these small hills and just kind of head toward that gap you see in the distance. Just climbing this small hillside next to camp, really an incredible view looking off into the distance. Oh, not too bad. I'm going to need to drop to that wash directly below me. And that connects with the wash of the side canyon, the third side canyon. Actually quite close right here. And just like that, I'm hiking up the third side canyon. Now one of the reasons I had considered cutting the third side canyon, if necessary, was that satellite imagery appeared to show a dry fall early on. However, that dry fall is not shown on the topo map. So I'm hoping for the best, but we'll find out here in a few minutes. This first major bend in the canyon could be quite revealing as to whether or not there's a major dry fall. So let's check it out at the same time together. Interesting, so it's not a major dry fall. What it is, is just a steep section. Check these narrows out. Steep section I'm about to climb. Very neat high rock walls all around. So it turns out the rest of this canyon is not passable. The dry fall is actually right there, kind of on the right center of the picture. It's a little bit polished and it flows over the edge into the canyon right there. So the canyon continues up above. Now up here, there's another little dry fall right there. But as you can see, this area is not safely passable to try to bypass and get around it. So indeed, I was correct that there was a major dry fall that blocked access to most of the canyon. But I'm still very happy that I had time to come check this out because otherwise I'd always wonder what's here. And also just seeing this first small section of narrows, as you can see behind me, it's quite beautiful and I appreciated being able to see it. But now I got to get back to camp and pack everything up. As I head back to camp, I just wanted to show you Grand View Peak and explain my route. So I'm going to head up toward the low spot on the left with my backpack. Around the corner, you can't see all the way, but I'm going to drop my pack there and then I'm going to climb up that ridge starting from the left and going to the right. You can see there's a gradual slope and then it's kind of flat across the top and then a little summit bump at the right side. Alright, so I packed up camp and now I'm going to backpack about one mile to my pack drop spot. And that's where I'll begin my day climb of Grandview Peak. Okay, let's get this backpack started. Keeps getting lighter. Another 10 pounds gone. Make sure I didn't forget anything here. I got it all. Okay, time to head out.
approaching the divide, separating these two sides. Be there in just a couple minutes. So I just came down the wash scene here and this is looking up toward the route I'll need to take to get up to Grand View Peak. But I'm going to swing around here and show you this is where I'm going to drop my heavy pack and notice the other side. So later today I'm going to be backpacking along that ridge seen in the distance. Looks like it's going to be an incredible experience walking across that. I need to start trying to attain the ridge right away, so I'm just gonna head straight up, work around the rock outcropping you see in the distance. So I made it to the first bump. You can see what I hiked up right there. Then turning around here, that is the second bump up there. That's where I'm gonna go to next, but I'm gonna use this ridge right here to go up and around to it. Getting closer to that second bump. I made it to the second bump and check out this view looking back down. There's the ridge I've climbed up. And there's the plateau where I slept on last night beneath Grandview Peak. This ridge walk is a lot nicer. The third bump is the actual summit. It's not that far away. Final few steps to reach this summit. My topo map confirmed that I'm there. This spot right here would be the actual summit. See somebody stacked up a few rocks. Well, I finally made it to the summit of Grandview Peak, my 48th major peak accomplishment in Death Valley. Grandview Peak is also known as 6948T on the topo map, which stands for the elevation here at 6,948 feet. My two special guests should be joining me shortly. Looks like I got up to the summit a little bit ahead of them. So let me show you the views. So this first view looks down into Grandview Canyon as well as that fourth side canyon. Straight across there at the top is Dry Mountain. And then circling on down, you can see the upper canyon that I explored yesterday. Then looking into Saline Valley finally. In the distance, I can see the Saline Valley Warm Springs and the Saline Valley Sand Dunes. As well, the Inyo Mountains create a huge backdrop with some Sierra Peaks visible slightly behind it. Then continuing on over to the ridge that leads to Warm BM, which I'll be hiking on in a while with my backpack. Then Round Valley. Finally, Yubahibi Peak and the racetrack. Here are our two hikers climbing up here, almost to the summit. How's it going? Hey, hey Jeremy. Hey Mike. You guys made it. Yeah, Grand View Peak. Long walk. 12 miles. That was 12 miles to right here? Yeah, 11.8. You said 192, Mike? 192. And what'd you say, Jeremy? I'm at 180 something. The upper 180s. Maybe 186. Right here is the actual All right. summit. Mike and Jeremy, the MPS. Steve Hall. Steve Hall, what number is this for you? This was 48. All right. There's 49, 49 and 50, 50. Or, yeah, just huh. over there, if yeah, I make awesome. it. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Let's see Mike here signing into the official registry. Furnace Creek, California.
my only comment is going to be long walk. Seven hours for you guys to make it up here one way. Nice job. It was all uphill coming. <laughs> so we're going to cruise back. Are there write-ups on people who have? Yeah, some canyoneers have made it down. This is unique. I've never had such a thing, but it looks... That's your summit treat? That's my summit making treat. We are just on top of Grand View. Grand View Peak, we made it. So you could spare a full bottle of lemonade? Um, full bottle or whatever you... you Let me drink this last sip. Okay. Maybe a little less, if that's okay. Whatever you could spare, yeah. that, I'm sorry, so that you'll have enough getting out. Is that, I think let's do that. Perfect, thank you, Mike. If that's still helpful. This helps a I'm lot. I'm a little worried after last week running out. I do have one quart in a Diet Mountain Dew in the car. Let's do a taste test. Ah, oh, it's nice to taste lemonade. Thank you, Mike. That little boost will help me get through the day. Sure. Appreciate it. So you're headed that way, and we're going down this thing, right? That thing. Oh, that thing. Okay. Well, we'll see you, Steve. Enjoy your it was last. Nice to see you guys on the peak. Yeah. Congratulations yeah. in advance on your triple peak. Yeah, I can't wait to bag number 50 up there. Yeah, 50, that's huge. And to have Grand View and so, more, the warm camel done. <laughs> so it was amazing to see you guys. Thank you so yeah. much. Funniest place I've yeah. ever met up with anybody. Yeah, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, have fun. All right. All right. Farewell. And there go my special guests. It's great to see them up there. Really added a lot to the trip. Appreciated meeting up with them. Now it's on to finish last chance solo just about back to my backpack I can see it now but I just want to show you what I went up I climbed the ridge right there the first bump and there's the second bump in the distance that was quite a fun climb well I'm leaving Grandview Peak area behind and continuing my backpacking now heading for the long ridge that leads to warm BM I've only got about four hours of daylight left, so I've really got to push hard and see how far I can make it before it gets dark. So I just came down that gully up there. Now I'm gonna cut across these hillsides to get to the next spot. Came across this old boundary marker. Just up as I'm gonna drop into a wash and head right. It's been super hot walking down this wash toward where I'll begin my ridge climb. But this nice Joshua tree Behind me has provided some shade. Nice relief from the sun, especially as I need to conserve water. I need to get up above this ridge in front of me. And as you can see, this looks like quite a challenging climb. So I'm gonna have to look for the best and safest route to go up and hope that it goes through and I don't have to turn back and try another route. Well, this is the ridge I've chosen to give a shot to. Oh, it's steep, looks passable, but let's see as we go up. Here's the view looking back into Round Valley at these slopes, and I'm climbing up there. On the top of the map, that's marked as 5907T. Hey, what makes this climb so challenging is the heavy backpack. 
Fortunately, I only have two gallons of water left instead of the five I started with. That certainly helps. And here it looks like I've picked up a sheep trail climbing up this steep climb. So I'm gonna follow this. Sheep know best. The sheep did indeed help me get around that bump. So this looks like uh, the next couple small bumps and I'll finally be on the ridge line. It's much easier to follow something like this than to randomly cut across this terrain. It's already hard enough as it is. So I literally followed the sheep trail for the last 45 minutes and it helped me skip those bumps. Those were unnecessary. And now, just climbing up to the ridge for my first time to look at what lies ahead. Well, I can see how the puzzle all connects now, how all these ridges connect over to the pass and then warm BM. The sun is going down soon. So I think I have at best one hour of hiking left today. Take a look at Round Valley. So pretty. The sun indeed is going down over Saline Valley and the Inyo Mountains. I got one more bump to get to over here before I turn to the right. I wanted to share a sunset view of Saline Valley. A neat canyon right below me here in the distance. That's Chalk Canyon, that white spot on the hill. And above it is Saline Peak. So there's not much daylight to film with left over here on day three. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of hiking after dark with a flashlight to make up some lost time. You can see the red and the clouds behind warm BM. Such a beautiful sunset this evening here in Death Valley. 6.40 p.m. It's the last bit of light over the Inyo Mountains. I'm still hiking. Next time I check in, probably be wherever set up camp. Hey everyone, so day three of Last Chance Solo has come to an end as I've set up camp along the ridge. And today was a really nice day. Enjoyed seeing that third side canyon, hiking Grandview Peak and doing the backpack up to this ridge. Now I did take a quick look by flashlight and this ridge may not be passable. I may not be able to reach Warm BM and Cameo BM tomorrow. Instead, I may need to hike back along the ridge and hike down into Round Valley. We'll see in the morning, <clears throat> but no matter what, safety is first. So I will do what feels safe and is best in that regard. All right, so thanks for joining me on day three. I'll see everybody in the morning. Welcome to day four of Last Chance Solo, my backpacking adventure in Death Valley. Last night I got to camp after dark and as I woke up this morning I could see the head wall behind me. Now just beyond the head wall not too far is Warm BM or Benchmark Peak and that was going to be my original goal for today. But in looking at the head wall and I'll show you this up close in a minute it looks quite sketchy and possibly impassable to get over it. 
So I'm going to change plans and I'm going to backtrack along the ridge and drop into Round Valley. And that will also allow me a chance to show you the spectacular ridge line I walked over in the dark last night. The views looking over both sides of the ridge were incredible and I was disappointed I couldn't show that to you on video. But now I'll have a chance to. So I hiked up by the head wall, which you can see right there. Definitely at this spot impassable, but very pretty cliffs. Notice the two different rock types. But looking around, there was a sheep trail heading lower down here, but again, crossing that looks sketchy. Let's look back over here. In the distance we see Saline Peak and Chalk Canyon and Steel Pass. Looking back toward Dry Mountain and the ridge that I slept on down below. And down into Round Valley. Taking one last look at the head wall. And I'm going to turn around and head down this ridge. Share with you some of the views. Those red bands are very pretty on that canyon across the way. Very deep canyon. I was just looking back at that head wall and see how far it extends to the left. That's totally impassable from the area where I was camping a little bit to the right and then far to the left. Totally impassable to get up there. Much easier to see and follow the sheep trail during the day. Sheep trail basically goes along this entire ridge. One final view of Saline Valley. Spectacular. Looking down into Round Valley, you can see the gentle slopes I'm heading down to reach the main wash down below. And I'm just following a nice spot that looked not too steep on the topo map and sure enough, a very gentle drop. The slope is gentle, but it's not the most hiker friendly terrain. It's just nonstop bush dodging and rocks of all sizes in the way. But nothing comes easy in Death Valley. Let's see what's coming up next. Oh, there goes a bunny. And this drop right here is what's coming up next. Down to that next little rise and then from there that will be the final drop right after that. And this is what the final drop will look like. I'll be down in Round Valley shortly. Round Valley, I made it. I'm hiking through what is probably the main wash down Round Valley. 
Look how far it stretches across as I look toward the warm BM ridge. Just wanted to say I'm really enjoying this crossing of Round Valley. Just the sheer emptiness of it all and being surrounded by the mountains of the Last Chance Range, which is the whole focus of this journey. Really amazing out here. Oh, I made it across Round Valley. That was my first time hiking in Round Valley since November 15th, 2009. Maybe in another decade I'll be back again. Well, I've reached the junction with the side canyon that leads to Corridor Canyon. Now, if I were to go straight on ahead, that would take me into Corridor Canyon, one of the nicest canyons in the Last Chance Range. But I'm going to be hiking back that way behind me, heading toward Yubihibi Lead Mine and then Racetrack Road in my vehicle. Let me show you some of these side canyon narrows. These are quite pretty. I've hiked through here two times before, so this is my third. Nice and cool in here as well. <clears throat> in case you were wondering how I'm doing on water, remember I started the trip four days ago with five gallons. And when I woke up this morning and loaded my bladder, I put my last three liters in there. So every time I stop to take a sip, now I'm wondering if that will be my last sip and I'll be all out. Fortunately, the hike is almost over. I have enough to get out, but it would always be nice to have more. I've made it back to the road. This is the road at Yubihibi Lead Mine. And I'm back in Racetrack Valley. Quite the adventure. Oh. Four days of backpacking come to an end. Good morning, everyone. It's day 
five of Last Chance Solo. It's actually one month later, but I have left some things unfinished out here that I wanted to come back and do to complete my trip. And this includes going to a special viewpoint overlooking the Last Chance range and the racetrack, and also accomplishing Warm BM and Cameo BM. Last night I camped on Hunter Mountain and it was quite a bit colder than it was just one month earlier. And there was actually some snow on the ground here. So get ready for a little bit of bonus footage. Not a lot, but just enough to properly wrap up the trip. So for the first short hike of the day, I'm gonna hike up to peak 5771T, which is notable because it towers above the racetrack. It's gonna be about two miles to get to the summit. To get to the base of this peak, I have to cross Ulida Flat Definitely a little cold up on this ridge. Approaching the full view. This looks like it's gonna be incredible. Wow. I don't think many people have seen a view like this of the racetrack. This is just breathtaking. Quite an incredible hike up to peak 5771T overlooking the racetrack in Yubahibi Peak and looking into the depths of the Last Chance Range. What a beautiful, spectacular lookout point here in Death Valley. All right, well, it's the afternoon of day five. I'm here at the parking area for Yubahibi Lead Mine. And I'm going to go ahead and backpack in. I'm not sure exactly how far, but I want to make the summit climb of Cameo and Warm tomorrow a little bit easier. And I'd like to spend one more night out here to wrap up Last Chance Solo. So I'm not going to show much of the scenery between Yubihibi Lead Mine and the side canyon junction because you already saw that earlier in the video. But just wanted to address something. Some might wonder why go back? Why go back to the same area you just were to finish the peaks of Warm BM and Cameo BM? Well, there's several reasons. First of all, I wanted Warm BM and Cameo BM to be my 49th and 50th Death Valley peaks. And I wanted to include it on this video. And also if I don't do it, then I'll feel like I left the route incomplete, left something unfinished. And I'll feel like that every time I see the video. On the other hand, safety does come first. And so I don't have any regrets about not doing it initially, but it will be a great feeling to actually fully accomplish the route and put safety first. That's all I really can ask for in Death Valley. And I'm happy to have another shot at finishing this. So now I will share some of the scenery if I see anything interesting because I came out this canyon back on day four and I'm going up this canyon, so the scenery will be a little different. Now this is kind of a neat view here. I'm walking along the top of this hillside and in the distance there is the Warman Cameo Summit block, the whole summit ridge line. Just wanted to touch on the weather for a moment. 
check out these clouds. They look quite dark. I did just get a weather forecast and it says there is a chance of rain in the next few hours. After a little bit of difficulty, I am now dropping into the wash of Upper Corridor Canyon. So looking down Upper Corridor Canyon and I'm gonna start heading up Corridor Canyon. Now I last was hiked Corridor Canyon November 15th of 2009 and before that April 28th of 2007. So it's been 11 years since I set foot in Corridor Canyon. Although these are not the best parts of it. I'm just at the tail end of it. Passing by a neat canyon wall in Upper Corridor Canyon. So I've just come out of Upper Corridor Canyon into Round Valley. You might recall earlier in the video I said maybe see you in a, another decade Round Valley. And it turned out to be only another month. But I've got to set up camp soon. It's 4.35 p.m. and getting dark fast. And sure enough, we have another beautiful sunset over the Last Chance Range. It's literally glowing. Well, I get one bonus night here in the Last Chance Range backpacking. So I've set up camp, it's already gotten dark, and I'm gonna go ahead and cook some dinner, some spaghetti this evening. So let me get ready for that. And that water is boiling. Okay, I'll let that set up for a few minutes and perhaps do a recap. So my food is setting up. I thought I'd give you a quick recap here of day five, what was really a bonus day here in the Last Chance Range. In the morning, I did a morning hike to peak 5771T, which of course was overlooking the racetrack in the Last Chance Range. And then in the afternoon, I backpacked starting at Ubihibi Lead Mine for almost five miles until I set up camp here just below the where the ridge begins that leads up to Cameo BM and then Warm BM or Benchmark Peak. Mm, nice and warm. Always nice to have a hot meal out here. Well everyone, that's just about it for today. I'm all set up here, got my pad, my sleeping bag, my backpacker's pillow. So I'm gonna catch some sleep. Hope to get up early. I've really had fun sharing the Last Chance range with all of you. I hope you've enjoyed watching it as well. And of course, as always, sending my love to Daria and Stefan. See you both soon. Good night, everyone.
Good morning, everyone. We have reached day six of Last Chance Solo, and this is the final day of the adventure, regardless of the outcome. It's 7.30 in the morning, and I'm about to begin the climb to Cameo BM. So I've got to gain, I think, close to 1,500 feet in elevation just to get to Cameo. So let's get this started. It is indeed a cold morning, I'm wearing about four layers. As well my Sherpa hat but I should warm up fairly quickly be able to start shedding layers soon up ahead toward the right side of the picture you can see what I'm gonna call the first bump heading to Cameo BM that's gonna be my first objective I'm about halfway to the first bump you could see what I climbed up right there and check it out already a great view of Round Valley and this is what I'm going to climb next. There's the first bump on the right side. Well, I have reached the first bump and now the climb will begin to get a bit steeper as I climb toward Cameo BM seen on the far left side of the picture. I've got about 700 feet more in elevation to go to reach that first summit. So just climbed up the next section to this small rocky outcropping and looking ahead there the summit is briefly out of view but the false summit is visible there on the left side. These super steep portions are always the hardest. Just about to the summit of Cameo. Cameo is this small little bump just ahead of me. Final few steps to Cameo BM. Saline Valley comes into view. And what do we have here? We have the benchmark. So let me share some of the views from Cameo BM. Looking over this way, Yubihibi Peak is visible. And then the closest ridge line you see to me, that is just above Cameo Canyon. In the background, that's Grapevine Canyon that leads out of Saline Valley. We're at the far southern end of Saline Valley. Circling around, you can see the Inyo Mountains and the Salt Lake of Saline Valley. Actually reflecting the Inyos just a little bit. And then mid Saline Valley, you can actually see the Saline Valley sand dunes there. Well, I made it to Cameo BM at 5,064 feet. And of course, BM stands for Benchmark Peak. This is my 49th Death Valley Peak. Such a beautiful view with Saline Valley behind me. But now it's on to a harder challenge, and that is to keep climbing another 1,100 feet to warm BM. So let's continue. First I have to drop down, lose some elevation, and then climb up something that looks super steep and challenging. So I got up to this mini bump here and I realized it was an unnecessary bump. Look how far I got to drop back down and then begin climbing that way. Looking back at Cameo, I've reached what I consider to be the first bump after it. Up ahead, that is the second bump straight in the middle. That's my next target and that looks very steep. Just a little bit left here to reach this second bump. I wanted to look around, check out these rocks here on that ridge in the distance. Just massive rocks jutting out from the mountainside. So I'm at the second bump past Cameo BM and I just wanted to show you Saline Valley has really revealed itself as I've gotten higher along the ridge here. So now I'm just crossing over a little bit of a flat area before beginning another climb. So I just wanted to show you the next bump this is going to be the last super steep one 
have to gain about 300 feet in elevation. But warm BM is only 120 feet in elevation above this bump. Now looking over this way in the center of the video, I think that is warm BM right there. Some very steep climbing through here. Ugh. Well, this is that bump on the ridge and I'm hoping it's passable. If it's not, I'm gonna have to backtrack and work my way around the bottom. So that proved to be a little bit too treacherous. So I'm actually going down a little bit. Still steep slope, but it's safe. I'm gonna go down and around this spot right here and then climb back up around the corner. That is what I went around rather than over. And you could see right there the low spot. This ridge continues to be ugly. So I'm going to stay lower for a portion. Warm BM is right in the center of the picture. So I'm gonna just try to cut side hill around some of these giant boulders. Finally got through the worst of that. The ridge is still a bit rocky, but it's not crazy like it had been. Behind me, you can see 6076T, which was what I was calling the third bump in between Cameo and Warm. But I wanted to mention something about Death Valley Peaks. For most of them, there's no real path to follow. So you kind of make your own way. You study satellite imagery and topo maps and then chart out a route, unless you can find previous routes used on the internet. And you kind of learn by trial and error. If I was to do this climb again, I would take a slightly different way but I made it and now it's on to warm BM. Just ahead, that's the fourth bump. That will be the final little marker spot before getting to the summit. Standing on the fourth bump now and it's only fitting, there's gonna be another elevation drop before climbing the final route to the summit. I knew it wouldn't come easy. Summit is close now. Not much farther, maybe five minutes. Only seconds away now from reaching the big 5-0. And by 50, I don't mean my age. I'm 46 years old right now. But I mean my 50th Death Valley Peak. And here we go. Warm BM or Benchmark Peak. Right here at the summit. Some things to check out. All right, I did it. Well, here I am on the summit of Warm BM. Gonna enjoy a snack here, take a little break, have some peanut butter, some nuts, some beef jerky. Gotta love these squeezable peanut butter packets for hiking. Mmm. So just wanted to show you a few things here at the summit. This is the benchmark. It says Warm on it. There's the registry in the registry can, and here is my entry. I am actually the 19th person or group to log in here since 1999. Here's some interesting wood, leftover wood debris at the summit. Okay, to show you some of the views from Warm BM Peak, Saline Valley, looking across at the Salt Lake, the Inyo Mountains behind it, the Saline Valley Sand Dunes, over here, the Sierras are slightly visible. Continuing around, we can see the plateau that leads to the headwall, which stopped me. Remember, I camped just below that headwall. Now, at the edge of the plateau, just behind it, you can see Saline Peak. Continuing this way, Dry Mountain is visible. And then on around to some of the Cottonwood Peaks, such as Right there, I'm looking at Leaning Rock BM. And that completes it. Well, that completes my summit of warm benchmark peak at 6,196 feet. And now I'm gonna begin the hike back to camp. But for now, I'm gonna put the cameras away unless I see something interesting and just focus on getting back to my tent as fast as I can to pack things up. But this has been amazing. 50 Death Valley Peaks, all culminating 
here on Warm BM at the end of Last Chance Solo. Well, I'm back at Cameo. You can see it on the right side. That took about two hours. I think I spotted the plane crash crater. There's a plane crash that happened a long time ago near Cameo BM. So I'm going to go check it out and see if that is the crater. And indeed, I've started finding quite a few metal pieces on the ground. So this must be the crash site. Right here is the plane crash crater. And here are some assorted parts that have been gathered and dropped right here. And here's what the plane crash crater looks at front, like from above. So as you can see, I've made it back to camp. Now I'm going to pack up camp and backpack back to my vehicle at Yubihibi Lead Mine. It'll take me at least two hours. In the meantime, it'll be getting dark and I'll be backpacking out by flashlight, so I won't have much to show you. Nothing like wrapping up the trip with a flashlight backpack. Well, I'm driving through the Last Chance Range, driving home from Death Valley. Just wanted to thank you for joining me for Last Chance Solo, a Death Valley adventure. The highs, the lows, the successes, the failures, the challenges that were faced, it all added up to a great adventure and I really enjoyed it. All right, take care everyone.